Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 1. We're going to be reading starting at verse 26 and moving on to verse 36. We'll be looking at the conversation between Gabriel and Mary, where Gabriel comes to Mary and tells him about, tells her about the, uh, the baby that is about to be conceived in her womb and what that means for mankind. Uh, when I went, read through this, this passage, I was uh, impressed to see that there were seven um, prophecies that were fulfilled within that, seven prophecies that were foretold in the Old Testament that were brought forth in this um, uh, and, and fulfilled in this, this verse, these series of verses. We're going to read that now and then we'll comment a little bit on one of them, one of the seven. Verse 26, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when he saw it, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And then this starts the prophecies. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this thing be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. What a wondrous thing for the, the God of heaven to have given us this information and this amount of detail. But one of the things that really impresses me is prophecy. And I'll, I'll talk about that all the time. I, it's one of, the, one of the great things that causes my faith to grow as I learn more and more about how prophecy is uh, revealed in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament, the writers of the, uh, uh, the, inspired, uh, the inspired writers of the New Testament wrote down uh, how those prophecies were fulfilled. And the seven prophecies that I picked up from this series of verses were, number one, that Jesus would be born of a virgin. Number two, that he would be great. Number three, that he would be called the Son of God. Number four, that he would be called the Son of the Highest. Number five, that he would be given the, the throne of his father David. Number six, that he would reign over the house of Jacob forever. And number seven, the child's kingdom would have no end. And as we think about those prophecies, that's a lot to be stuffed into just a few verses there, but it is still very interesting as we look at it. Today, I'd like to take a look at number five, which is the fact that uh, he would be given the throne of his father, David. We see that promise given in uh, 2 Samuel 7, verse 12, and I'll just quickly read that. And when the days, and when thy days be fulfilled, this would have been uh, through Nathan the prophet to David. And when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed of, out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Again, that is 2 Samuel 7, 12. And additionally, We've got Jeremiah a little further down the line, in Jeremiah 23, chapter 5. He says, 
Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign, reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. So these are the two really strong prophecies that say that David is going to inherit that, that uh, Jesus will be the one that the seed of David will actually sit on his throne and that this kingdom would be set up uh, would be set up in the days of these kings, which is Daniel 2.44, uh, which we, uh, we understand to be the Roman Empire, and that David would sit on that throne, uh, that Christ would sit on that throne of David. So as we take a look at where this in the New Testament is really, really brought to life, we can go to Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to start reading about 30 or 36. Again, that's Acts chapter 2, verses 30 through 36. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, that he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereupon we are all witnesses. I should stop here for just a second. This is uh, the Apostle Peter. Again, after the apostles received the Holy Spirit, they've gone out and they're teaching in Jerusalem to all the people. And Jesus and uh, Peter is, is preaching these words and explaining to them that this Christ, who they crucified, is indeed uh, the, the Christ, and Jesus of Nazareth is he. Verse 32, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. What he's talking about there is the Holy Spirit. They were witnessing each one of the apostles speaking in a different tongue and preaching, and he was saying that that Holy Spirit is shed forth. That's what they see. So in verse 34, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith to himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy, foes, thy, thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So if you look at verse 30, it's going to be the Christ that sits on David's throne. And then in verse 36, Peter identifies Jesus of Nazareth the same one that they had crucified as the Christ. So that kind of closes the loop. And he doesn't, doesn't act like there's, this is, this is 50 days after Christ has been crucified that he makes this statement on the day of Pentecost. But yet there's another verse that's very key that you want to link that to. Uh, and that is 1 Corinthians 15, 25. That would have been written 20 years after uh, Jesus had already ascended back. Peter's talking about uh, in Acts 2, he's talking about Christ sitting on the throne right now in the present time, 50 days after Jesus uh, had risen. And here we've got 25 years later, we've got Paul saying the very same thing. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, 25 through 26, he says, For he must reign, present tense, till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And we know that at the end of time, when Jesus comes back, he won't touch the earth. He'll come with a shout uh, and the trumpet and uh, the dead in Christ will raise first and then the rest will be gathered unto Christ and there we will be with the Lord evermore. That's the end of time. That's, that's it at that point. There'll be no other time. At that time, death will be finally destroyed. So as we contemplate these things, let's, let's, let's remember uh, how much prophecy impacts our faith. Jesus is reigning right now. We're not waiting. He's not a crown prince waiting for his kingdom to come at some other point. He's the king. He is the, the ruler sitting on David's throne right now. And we get that information from, from those, those verses. Please research each one of these verses if you would. Again, I'll go over them. Um, 1 Samuel 7, 12, Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Those are the prophecies. The fulfillment of those things are found in Acts 2, 30 through 36, and 1 Corinthians 15, 
25 through 26. Each of the other prophecies are just fascinating. The other, the other six that we've just talked about, each one is worthy to be researched on its own. Um, thank you for listening and hope this has been beneficial.